హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ వెల్కమ్ టు ఎపిసోడ్ ఎయిట్ ఆఫ్ ద మహాభారత పాడ్కాస్ట్ వన్స్ అగైన్ లాస్ట్ వీక్ ఐ కుడెంట్ మై కెన్ ఎపిసోడ్ దిస్ ఇస్ టర్నింగ్ అవుట్ టు బీ యూ నో ఫోర్త్ నైట్లీ పాడ్కాస్ట్ ప్రాబ్లీ ఐ ట్రై టు బీ మోర్ రెగ్యులర్ బట్ నెవర్ మైండ్ ఐఎమ్ బ్యాక్ లాస్ట్ టైమ్ ఇన్ ద లాస్ట్ ఎపిసోడ్ వీ వీ లెఫ్ట్ ఇన్ ద ప్లేస్ వేర్ పాండు వాజ్ మ్యారీడ్ హీ హ్యాడ్ టు వైవ్స్ అండ్ దెన్ ధృతరాష్ట్ర మ్యారీ టు గాంధారి అండ్ గాంధారి డిడ్ ఎ బ్లైండ్ ఫోల్డ్ సో పాండు వాజ్ వెరీ వెరీ లర్న్డ్ కింగ్ మీన్ యాజ్ ఐ సెడ్ హీ వాజ్ బోర్న్ పేల్ హీ డిడ్ నాట్ హ్యావ్ సర్టన్ క్వాలిటీస్ యూ వాజ్ నాట్ వెరీ స్ట్రాంగ్ సర్టన్ కింగ్ క్వాలిటీస్ దట్ కింగ్ నీడ్స్ టు హ్యావ్ బట్ దర్ ఇస్ వన్ థింగ్ దట్ వీ ఆల్ నీడ్ టు రిమెంబర్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఇట్ it's not how you are born that will decide what you are it is how you develop yourself how you take yourself forward and what are the things you learn on the way what is the karma you do in your birth that is exactly what determines what you become and that is seen again and again in all our mythology all our documents that we have so this is another example of what where karma can take you though pandu was born pale he was not so strong with his ability to learn learning he had become a very good king with very good archery skills he was very good in archery so with that uh, he and of course bhishma by his side he ruled the kingdom pretty well with his queen you know with the guidance of vidura who was a really brainy guy and with bhishma there was no stopping pandu he he even expanded the territories of hastinapur he was ruling really well the people of hastinapur kingdom were very happy and bhishma and satyavati thought that you know which it's something that they wanted the setup is good now things are going fine and even satyavati passed away now all the kings in in the olden days they had this sport of hunting they they treated hunting as a sport and we can see this in many parts of the world uh, it's not so much in india it's, uh, they did not have lot of these real time war okay so they can't just keep you know fighting in setup of the palace where they had okay certain playground kind of setup to practice their war skills but it was not always that you know there is always a difference between your practice sessions and when you go to real war so what they used to do is of course it it's not good that they treat animals as the guinea pigs for their practice but of course that's that's what how it was that was the practice that kings usually kshatriyas used to go out to jungle for hunting so that they can sharpen their skills you know when they try to hunt different animals around they thought they could sharpen their war skills especially people for good at archery they used to go for hunting and that's how pandu you know he was a ve- he was very passionate about hunting so he was regularly going to forest for hunting once when he went to hunting he saw a deer couple uh, a male and female deer playing together at a very long distance and what he did immediately he 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 just he he couldn't actually see what they were doing he he saw that there were two deers standing probably uh, by each other so he just immediately took an arrow and he shot it towards the deer and what happened when he shot the arrow and when the arrow struck the deer suddenly he heard some human being shout so he was mesmerized what is this this is the deer i shot and uh, there seems to be some human being who's crying out loud now that is where he went and checked and unfortunately that's when he realized that the the male deer was actually sage kindama and he was making love with his wife in the form of deer sages through their long meditation and their learned parse they they could transform themselves into different forms and sage kindama and his wife had transformed into deer and they were making love and pandu when he realized he he felt very bad and he apologized king but before he could say anything sage kindama was really angry see there could be a question here how will even pandu know that you know the deer is not real and it is 
a sage who was transformed sage and his wife who was transformed now the point of argument between kindama and pandu was not why he shot at a deer kindama said it is not appropriate for any hunter to shoot at any animals who are making love the animals if they are along with their couples along with the male and female if they are together one is not supposed to shoot an arrow and hunt those animals so that was the rule book that kindama was pointing at when this is the rule how can king pandu break that rule and shoot but pandu had a different perspective of that same rule but before pandu could say anything sage kindama threw a huge curse on pandu and he said i curse you for this the way you shot me when i was happy with my wife you also have to go through the same pain of not being able to happy with your wife for the rest of your life if you go and touch any of your wives that moment you will die if even if you just have a small shake even if you shake hands with any of your two wives you will immediately die the same second he gave that curse and before pandu could apologize or ask for uh, you know forgiveness anything unfortunately sage kindama died the curse is a curse you, you can't you can't help as i said the sages had huge meditational powers and they could curse they could use it to curse someone or give boon to someone and we saw he was using it to transform himself etc now the curse is a curse no one can do anything about it he has to go through it so at this point pandu went and told this whole story in the palace he said now unfortunately this is the end of it i don't want to continue anywhere in the palace i don't want to be in the city anymore i will leave like a sage it's more like how i given up everything that's what called the vana prastha and uh, retirement life so that's what i'm supposed to leave like so i will sacrifice everything and i will leave in jungle now the strange thing here is he probably could have gone alone but then his wife say okay when you are leaving like that what is there for us here so we will come along with you so that we can serve you in the jungle now this is more a dangerous thing that that they did see there is one thing that we all have to observe here when you do something out of your will you will do it perfectly well you that's what you like doing you are doing it out of your will that takes a whole different perspective and your approach to things will be in a whole different whole strong and whole clear way of approach when you are doing something out of your will here pandu did not sacrifice everything and go to jungle out of his own will it's a curse he has no other go so it's a forced decision that pandu took and going along with his wives to jungle was not so much a good decision but yeah that's how it was and the wives wanted to go along with him so they went along with him things were fine but then pandu suddenly became very unhappy he looked very disappointed and uh, kunti asked him okay why i why do you look so disappointed what's wrong what then pandu said see it's okay i have this curse i can live like this throughout my life not an issue but the bigger thing that sorrows me is that i don't have any kids again the same problem what the family has been having for a very long time the same problem is stuck again and i ended up with my mistake one small mistake that i did i have ended up not having any kids at all kunti thought for a while now she knew what to do all and probably as you all have guessed kunti had got a boon from durvasa to have kids with properties of any you know elements around or any demi gods now kunti thought that it was time to somehow tell that to pandu and probably use that and then she slowly starts probably this is why people say everything is for good and everything is predetermined pandu will be mesmerized last word what are you trying to say he said no no uh, i just got a boon from sage durvasa when i was a teenager because i served him actually i was wondering why he gave this boon to me and now i realize the boon is something that we really are in need of then pandu will ask go what is the boon and then kunti narrates everything to him pandu would be delighted pandu was delighted upon hearing 
uh, that whole narration from kunti and he says this is something the best news that you have told me today you have made my day by telling this there's absolutely no wrong in you know having kids the way you are telling and in fact having it for the demi gods and skills and with the powers and with the qualities of demi gods or the elements nature definitely we are going to have the best kids so please do go ahead use the mantras and please help me to continue the lineage and then kunti obliges and now she can freely use the mantras now the first thing she did was she went to dharma dharma is the foundation of everything again this is the very important message that we need to pick from here you 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 can actually see what is important in life that is the order in which actually kunti goes kunti goes to dharma first and she says i need a kid whose dna is filled with dharma that kid should always give the most important to dharma and he has to live by dharma so that's how dharma raya or yudhishthira was born that was the first kid kunti gave birth to and year later uh, kunti again used used the same mantra and she then uh, requested vayu now the second one all that is very important for us is the physical strength or fitness when we say physical strength it's not you know muscle power to build someone it's more the fitness the prana in you the vayu vayu is the prana why why vayu is considered so important think about it let us talk about a truck i mean i'm from an automotive world so probably i take the examples this kind so <laughs> let's talk about a very huge truck now finally when a completely loaded truck is around what is that that is carrying the whole payload or the entire load it is air that is filled in the tires imagine a truck that has everything even a fuel but if you don't put that air into the tires the truck can't move now that is what is the power of air the power of vayu that's why vayu you can see even hanuman who is vayu putra who is very strong in ramayana the same way bhima who is actually thought to be the incarnation of hanuma the same that's why it's the same nature when you say incarnation it's not that one person became the other it's something somebody with the same nature probably the same information contained in their you know genetics so the second one kunti went for vayu she requested for a kid with a healthy strong fit nature of vayu and the chow bhima was born so she had a second kid in the form of bhima now after that the third one you need that's most important in life is skill now who else is more skilled than indra indra was you know believed to be the best warrior of all time so she prays lord indra and says i need a kid who is as skillful as you and then Arjuna was born and we all know that Arjuna was the most skilled archer that we are going to talk for a long time now uh, in our future episodes Arjuna was born and then Kunti thinks and she goes and suggests to Pandu and Madri that let me not you know have all the trust for myself i would also want madri to use so they agree and then she kind of uh, transferred this knowledge transfer of the mantra from kunti to madri and then madri uses the mantra now the last thing that is important in life is appearance of course aesthetic sense is not so bad but probably it has to take the last seat that's what i have been telling from episode 1 and madri she prayed to ashwini brothers ashwini brothers were demigods who were thought to be so very handsome so she prayed to uh, ashwini brothers and then she delivered to twins and those twins were nakula and shahadeva and nakula was believed to be really really handsome so that's how the five panduputras were born the first one yudhishthira second one bhima third one arjuna and then two kids of madri that was nakula and shahadeva now let's shift our focus a bit from this jungle episode when pandu left who will take the throne of hastinapur there was no other choice now that pandu had to give the throne to dhritarashtra and that's how dhritarashtra ended up becoming the king of hastinapur so pandu gave gave up his throne to his brother he said now i am not there i am unable to continue 
so i request you to please continue uh, being the king of hastinapur he gave the throne to dhritarashtra and he left okay dhritarashtra was happy that he got the throne but now there was a race see the whole idea was whoever is the elder most kid in the family that kid will become the next king it's not that it's king's son you know the entire family live together so whoever will have the kid early whoever is the eldest kid born he should become the next king that was the rule that was the rule that was followed gandhari was actually carrying she learned from someone the kunti already gave birth to a child and she is actually carrying this she is about to give birth to the second one upon hearing this gandhari was really furious because she already knew how her husband suffered because of not being able to sit on the throne and pandu was given the throne she was she was afraid that harshan also has to go through the same pain and she always wanted to be the first to give birth but when she learned that kunti already gave birth to the eldest kid and she was about to deliver the second she was really furious and it is believed that she started punching her own womb with her hands and then you know the the life in her womb it actually broke and that's when the family again remembered uh, you know the savior uh, the great vyasa you you see this uh, somehow vyasa seemed to have had a very uh, thorough research and he was probably someone who was really skilled in these matters of birth he he was probably an expert and uh, we have all the examples of the latest technology there we al- already saw probably the artificial insemination now we have a example here of test tube babies and when vyasa came and learned and when he saw that you know she had a- actually broken the womb he actually could take the life out of that womb and he made it into pieces he made it into 100 pieces now this is how 100 kauravas were born he actually made them into very small pieces unfortunately because he had to keep it in you know a very fertile soil and put them into pots it's more like how you you know grow plants or how you hatch eggs so he puts those smaller pieces into 100 different pots and that is how he had 100 kauravas and the eldest of them was called duryodhana so some text actually call him suyodhana or it was duryodhana again that's why you see all the kauravas they probably had few minutes or days of difference in their birth suyodhana so was the eldest and then followed dushyasan of course kunti was about to give birth so she gave birth to bhima at the same time so that's why you see bhima and duryodhana were more or less of the same age so that is how the order goes yudhishthira was the elder most and then bhima and duryodhana and then of course dushyasana arjuna all of them followed so this is how pandavas and kauravas were born and this is where i leave you at end of today's episode so next week we'll see what happens when kauravas meet pandavas how did their story go how did the rivalry begin what happened next all this when we move ahead till then have a good weekend have a good week ahead sarve janaha sukhino bhavantu see you friends bye bye